everybody, it's Dandro for the news cartridge for Monday, September 18th, 2017. What a wonderful day, which begins with my favorite game that I'm playing lately, PUBG breaking the all-time highest concurrent player count on Steam. Ending at a staggering 1.34 million people playing all at the same time, this beats out Dota 2's previous record of 1.29 million. As far as I can tell too, it's only gonna keep climbing. And I am loving the new foggy weather map, but if you're not, then don't try to get around it because editing the game's files is now a bannable offense. I do have to point this out that I'm not sure why Blue Hole keeps doing it this way because people were editing settings before that completely disabled grass. Yeah, maybe you just want to stop doing that. And then I just had to share this PUBG story because a player by the name of Mysterion157 was playing a couple of nights ago when his parents called him for dinner. Gamers doing as gamers do and seeing as how you can't pause the game, he did the only reasonable thing of finding a house, going into the bathroom, closing the door, laying down in the bathtub, and then went to eat. More than 15 minutes goes by and you can see multiple circles close in on their exact location and eventually they take the win. I wouldn't believe this but there is a video if you want to go see the whole thing play out for yourself. On to release announcements with the horror game Layers of Fear coming to the Nintendo Switch. Yeah apparently I'm reading that correctly. Nintendo is bringing a rather graphic horror game to the platform at some point in the future and this title will include both Layers of Fear Legacy and the expansion Layers of Fear Inheritance. Next up in update news Destiny 2 was down for a few hours this morning to apply hotfix 1.0.1.3 which is only a few megabytes to download and fixes a few bugs. If you want to find the full patch notes there's a link in the description down below. The division is getting updated tomorrow to version 1.7.1 and if you want to find the patch notes for it as well as the upcoming 1.8 patch notes there's a link for that down below too. And then our last bit of update news is kind of a sad one because Gearbox has announced that Battleborn will not be receiving any more content after the fall update as the development team has been shifted to work on Borderlands 3 instead. Mark today as the day the final nail was put in Battleborn's coffin. The summer is almost over, and if you're looking for a few more games to play, two places are currently holding giant sales for games. Starting with the first, GOG, if you want your games completely DRM free. And then Humble is hosting their end of the summer sale if you prefer that some of your money go to charity along with your purchase. It's just a reminder that you always have great options to buy PC games. Moving on to a story hoping to expose a bit of Nintendo's hypocrisy because of their stance on emulators. Would you believe that every single Nintendo Switch has an emulator in it. I hope you would, otherwise my setup for this is completely pointless. The secrets don't stop there because there is an application included called Flog, which is just golf spelled backwards. Nintendo has done a number of in-house modifications to this emulator too because it is fully compatible with all of the Joy-Con controller's functions. However, there's one little catch. No one knows how to access it. Currently, the only way anyone can gain access to it is through a hack. It's suspected that this emulator is related to the Nintendo Online Subscription Service, and Golf will be the first title that Nintendo hands out. Our next story is yet again more emulator news, but for a game that was released in 1999 by developer Turbine Inc. and published by Warner Brothers called Asheron's Call. Asheron's Call had been shut down earlier this year after being online for 12 years, the last two years having no new content released. Upon shutting down, Turbine had also released some information to fans saying that emulators of Asheron's Call would be easier to create from the original client, so fans assumed that everything was okay for emulation. And as it turns out, nope! WB sent them a cease and desist letter and shut them down, and though they are well within their rights, it's still a shitty thing to have done. Moving right along, this story was originally intended to be the main topic for today, but then events turned out a little bit different than I would have hoped. I thought that cross-platform play had finally come to console because there was definitive proof that an Xbox gamer tag was playing with a PlayStation 4 gamer in Fortnite of all games. You could not imagine the happiness on my face when I discovered this this morning, only to have my dreams dashed by Epic Games, stating that this was essentially a mistake and called it a configuration issue and it has since been corrected. This not only shows that this feature can be enabled without either party's approval, but it seems as though some companies are already working on it and have it more or less ready to go, but most importantly, it was turned on without anyone noticing. From what I can tell, no one was dissatisfied from turning it on, so why did they turn it off? Please, if you have anything else you'd like to share, leave your thoughts on what you think of cross-platform play in the comment section down below. And that brings us to our final topic today, which is the game, Death Penalty Beginning. If you've never heard of this game, it's developed and published by VI Games LLC, and this is the only game in their portfolio released on January 23rd earlier this year, and it costs $1.99 US, or your regional equivalent. Steam is now riddled 
with forum threads claiming the developer had revoked their key, with a Reddit post claiming that it was because death penalty keys were not paid for. Steam reviews claim otherwise, as one person claims their key was revoked, they bought another one only to have it revoked again, and purchased yet another key to leave this review. Just to be clear, and I will speak as an authority on this, keys are being removed regardless of where they were obtained from, because my friend Whiskers had his key revoked and he received it through a giveaway through either Indiegella or Simplo.gg, both being legitimate websites. I also don't doubt that the people who have claimed to buy this game just to see if it will get revoked aren't lying, and I personally would have done that, but it's a bit of a catch-22. It's not the $2 price tag. Buying this game just to get it revoked is possibly what this developer is up to, as they have drawn attention to their game and are now benefiting from sales because of this controversy. So please, do not give this developer any more of your money, and be on the lookout for them in the future because they've effectively committed professional suicide by taking away other people's property. This is one of those times Valve had better step in and fix it, by not only regranting licenses to anyone who's had it revoked, but by removing this dev from Steam altogether. No one has time to put up with this bullshit. The developer has not said anything about this in regards to this action. Nothing on Steam and nothing on their Twitter. It's being suspected though that this was done because the developer had been promising trading cards would be added at some point in the future, but was denied by Valve, so he retaliated by revoking all keys. This part, again, has not been confirmed, but it makes a heck of a lot of sense to me, considering how long trading cards have been promised since at least January earlier this year, and they still have not been added. If this is how a developer is going to react to the new Steam Direct rules, then get ready for a roller coaster, because this is just the beginning. Having Steam trading cards is not a reason to make a game, and my friend Whiskers suspects, and I would agree, that the only reason for the trading cards was to make money from gray market sales. Once more, I must emphasize, I have no proof of this because the developer isn't talking, it just makes the most sense to me. Were you affected by this? Did you have your key for death penalty beginning revoked? Let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, it's time for tomorrow's game releases. For PC, Echo, Eternal Lore, Color Sudoku, Above the Fallen, American Patriots, Boston Tea Party, Neo Fund, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, At Omega, Undercity, The Caribbean Sale, Unbalance, Fight and Rage, When It Hits the Fan, Football Mongol 18, Mystic Melee, Voxel Interceptor, and Jump Fist. For PlayStation 4, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, Hidden Dragon Legend, The Coma Recut, more Fight, The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus, Echo, Robonauts, Black Guards 2, Factotum 90, and Inc. For Xbox One, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite and Black Guards 2. For PlayStation Vita, Mary Skelter Nightmares and Factotum 90. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff. I will see you tomorrow. And how do you milk a sheep? You put out a new iPhone and charge $1,000 for it. Oh boy, we're gonna have a lot of iPhone. Uh, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna have a lot of iPhone lovers in the comments section. It's not a. Sh I'm not a sheep. It's not that expensive. It's worth the money. It's a nice looking phone, and I think it's fine without the without all. The this is how people type. They type with really. They type with a six inch um, accuation. So this is how people type. Um. Can we really stop having devs behaving badly? I'm really thinking of creating a series called Devs Behaving Badly. And people like this fucker, this VI LLC guy, VI Games LLC, I think that was his name. I haven't even bothered to remember his fucking name. Um, VI Games LLC. It's either VI or V or Six Games. I don't know. He's, I'm not really sure. But he has been promising trading cards, I believe, since... I think this game was in Steam Direct. I don't know. I don't. I really don't know. Um, no, this game wouldn't have been in Steam Direct because it launched at the beginning of... It, it was uh, earlier this year that it launched, and this launched in February or January. So, no, it wouldn't have been subjected to the same rules as Steam Direct. Hmm. Regardless of whether or not this guy deserves the trading cards, not getting the trading cards doesn't mean that you go revoke licenses, okay? Whether or not he should have it... You should have like, hey guys, I, I brought this through Steam, uh, through Steam Greenlight. I didn't bring it through Direct, so therefore I am not subjected to the rules of Steam Direct. So why weren't they giving me trading cards? Maybe you know, maybe if you would have taken that uh, line of defense. Um, how's the saying go? You catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. I'm learning that myself, okay? I've learned some hard lessons in life that, you know, maybe you don't want to just go 
Balls to the walls. I'm going to, oh, this is how you should do it. Maybe she go, hey, have you ever seen a different way of doing that before? And people tend to be more receptive. They really do. It, you got to be nicer about this. You don't just start, oh, I have problem. Bravo keys. Like, that's not, that's not how this goes. Uh, it's just, it's so terrible, too, because if, if, if what I think is true, they, um, they are just revoking keys regardless of sales, of whenever it was sold, so it doesn't matter if it was gotten a bundle, it doesn't matter if you got the game for free, it doesn't matter if you paid full price, it doesn't matter if you got it on, on the Steam sale, it's, it's, he is just pulling keys, and he's actively doing this, too. If he's doing that because he was denied trading card sales, it's so terribly, that is such a terrible mindset to have to put yourself in for nine months. This game has been out for nine months, and this guy's just been sitting, waiting, just enough, and, you know, just once those trading cards hit, and I don't know if you guys know, once once your game gets trading cards, I'm going to make sure i got enough time to talk about this, once your game gets trading cards... That's it. That's your ticket in the door, the valve door for easy money, okay? And this is something that I, I like to I like to describe it as this is that you'll make a shitload of money from from Steam from not selling your game. You'll just make money from not selling your game. What you're selling, and you're not even the one selling it. Trading cards. The trading cards are worth I don't know, somewhere between 7 cents and sometimes they're worth like 18 cents and people buy them because it helps level up your steam account Want leveling up your steam account gets you more spots for friends list on your friends list gets you a couple of you know new get you a new badge here and there gets you little benefits they gamified the steam account so of course people are going to spend money on this and if you buy say an 18 cent card the person on the other end only gets about 13 14 cents of that valve gets a cut and the dev gets a cut. So from somebody else, from you, you generate four cards, you make, you make eight cents from some because somebody else owned your game. Just because they owned the game, you made more money. And people buy cards to people buy cards low to sell them for higher. They and they get a percentage, not like a fixed rate. It's a percentage. So the more they're selling, the higher that they're selling them for, the more money they make. Um, it was I watched a video that estimated Digital Homicide before they got kicked off of Steam was bringing in around eight thousand dollars a month, and not from game sales, just from selling cards. And they weren't the ones selling the cards. They weren't the ones buying the cards. They just benefited that. That's, I mean. It's it's scary in like it's it's not scary it's awe inspiring how much money you can make let's go whoa you can make tons of money if you just I don't know we'll put out 19 games a year we'll put out 100 games a year and then once we put out those 100 games two of them if two of them get in the door and get trading cards that's our ticket, that's our meal maker, that's our bread and butter right there. Digital Homicide, Zonatron, any of these guys, that's all they're trying to do now. Is they're, that, that's, what, that's what Steam Direct did, was to try to combat this, but they're still going to try. They're still trying to get the Steam trading cards to, to farm money of that. This is what we have come to in our, in our state of video games. It's kind of crazy that the digital store that we buy them from is contributing to the terrible amount of games that are coming out. You can't say that Steam isn't, Valve isn't contributing to this. They're the ones who set this whole ordeal up. And we gotta, you gotta take the good with the bad. Because as cool as it is that, you know, you can play trading, you can play a game, get some trading cards. I've got enough trading cards at least probably to sell off and buy a whole other game. I don't sell them because I just kind of hang on them. Ah, my camera died. Oh, well. Hi, other camera. That's why we have this camera. I think it's the battery. It is the battery. The battery's dying. Okay, so I need another battery. Um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. I lost my train of thought. 
the camera shit down and lost my train of thought. Oh, shit. Oh, well. Um, I think you get where I was going with this. Valve set this up. We're going to have to take the good with the bad. And as cool as it is that you can sell trading cards and make some money back from your thing, like, make some money back to buy other games, you can... That's that's what's doing this. Oh, well. Well, well hopefully Valve figures this out. They're playing... They hopefully have some type... I have a little bit of faith in them that they do, but I also have faith that they don't. They're... I don't know. Well... It's, it's a waiting game. It's a waiting game. Same with that Alex Mauer thing. Hopefully that's over next week. Social media links are over here, everybody. Every, uh, Social media links are over here, everybody. Click over here to subscribe to my channel. Click over here to watch Friday's episode, which was about uh, Monday. Yeah, Friday's episode, which is about itch.io bundle benefit benefiting the hurricane victims from Irma and Harvey. Thank you very much, everybody. And I forgot to say, say play some games on Friday, so go play some games tonight. And, uh, yeah, bye. Play some games.